All right guys, welcome back. Uh, my name's Nick, I'm here today with Chris Spicer and this is gonna be part two of my Hilux stiff conversion. All right, so I'm back here again at uh, CS Engineering. Uh, Chris Spice is gonna be sorting out the diff. We're gonna be doing the, a couple of finishing touches on the fab work. I'll let him run through what we're gonna do today. And after today, hopefully, I'll be taking the car home to trial fit it and make sure it's all good before powder coat. So give us a bit of a rundown, man. What, what are you up to today? Basically, after we bracketed the diff last time, um, we've had all our uh, brake componentry come into stock now. Yep. Um, uh, since, I think we had axles last time, but um, since we've got axles, bearings, retainers, ends, uh, everything now. So t tonight we'll be putting ends on the diff and also finishing the fab on our spring locators. Um, we're trying to replicate the factory spring locator, but mm. thick enough to kill a ship. <laughs> and uh, yeah, hopefully we'll get it to a stage tonight where everything, uh, the brake brackets will get tacked on because the diff is a little bit shorter than the factory. We want to make sure our brake caliper clearances are good first. Um, Nico can take the diff away after tonight and this afternoon and check, bolt it into the car and actually check all the clearances. Yeah. So that's our goal. Um, we're going to add the brake bracket um, for the brake line. It's already got the factory Hilux Breaver, which is in a really good spot on this. Mm. Um, we've quickly checked the penard as well for clearance on the back hat because we make these brackets with a couple of degrees less in them and then we step them out as well mm, yep. um, f because of the other one we had clearance issues with and had to bend the bar this one we've factored that in uh, and we'll probably mount the sway bar on brackets as well we check that though so on this because the pumpkin's smaller on the hilux than the nine inch uh, and we have had all the brackets cad longer as well um, seems to work yeah, the factory sway bar yeah. seems to work now too. So um, if we can get it all, um, the sway bars tacked on, spring locators tacked on, and the diff ends welded on, and yeah, we can send it for a test fit, and Beautiful. then we'll come back and do some welding. Beautiful, I'm very excited, man. So, very yeah, excited. me too. <laughs> yeah, no, you're not. <laughs> So we have just welded the ends onto the diff. Um, we did all the rest of the welding on the housing first. Um, in the last, um, I guess the last part, we welded all the bracketry to the housing. Um, we checked the housing to make sure it hadn't distorted out more than what our tolerance is. Um, our diff ends ended up lining up like pretty well. Um, the housing was actually quite good when we we're finished. Um, we've put our uh, bar back through the center which we saw in the last episode and um, we've put our large forward ends into it so um, this here while I was tacking the ends on um, was pulled taunt together and then um, I tack it and get it all tacked in a manner that this is flat flat the diff ends flat with the mandrel um, the mandrels will hold them while the diff ends cool down now. Like I put four tacks and then I came back and welded in between the four tacks. So um, it's like painting a car. The better the prep, the better the finish is. Um, it was zero before I started welding. So there's no way 
you can ever get any better than that as a final result. Um, we'll let this cool down now, and then once it's cooled down, we'll pull the mandrels out, strip the housing off, and we'll probably uh, check the diff center, um, sit the axles in. Um, we have to drill discs, tack the brake brackets, and we're pretty much done. Um, nice. We're on the home stretch now, so. What do you mean when you say mandrels? What's, what's um, that, those little These machined, um, these machine, we, we call them a mandrel. Yep. Um, they've, uh, they've got different size. They've got a shoulder for the bearing end to sit onto. Okay. And then um, we've also, they are to suit, they're like, you know, 0.1 of a millimetre smaller than what they need to be okay. as well. So, um, yeah, when we weld everything on, it basically is just a steady yep. for when we weld it on and to align our bearing. Um, I, people say that, you know, you can have like five thou of bearing deflection and stuff like that, but we try and get them as square as possible right. like it's just um yeah we don't usually have any issues if you do have your ends out or you guess it and you machine the ends so it fits into the tube um and your diff housing is bent you could have toe in toe out mm -hmm. positive camber negative camber you can flex the axle yep. um ruin the bearing instantly there's there's so many um we generally don't have bearing issues and stuff like that because the diffs are built with a bore okay. bar and um the mandrels That's better. So that extra sleeve there, is that just? Uh, that's a lock collar, keeps the bearing on the axle. So ah. this is zero fit, zero tolerance. Yeah. Um, so if the axle, if the heat and the bearing expands and the axle expands, it can actually slip off. Okay. Um, it can, but I actually had a customer once, usually when I dummy something up, I cable tie the lock rings if the customer's doing their own assembly. Okay. But I will dummy put the bearings on just to um, get the car rolling or work out our, um, brake setup or whatever we're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he had forgot to put the lock collars on and he oh. asked me like about five years after the car was on the road, he said, oh, what are these, by the way? Fuck. And I said, fuck, man, they're your lock collars <laughs> off your axle. And he's like, oh, so do I need to? I was like, yeah. So then we, I said, come over. I, we pulled the axles out on the, um, on the hoist and then threw the lock collars on. But um, yeah, that was on a set of Mark Williams axles. Um, but yeah, now that just holds the bearing on. Yeah, so, um, the, this is a performance bearing yep. on this. Uh, it's basically a large Ford, so like an F100 or an F152 wheel drive, um, rear wheel bearing. Yep. Um, it's a straight uh, bearing. So uh, a straight, it's got a straight roller race, yep. so it's very low drag. Um, the tapers, um, because the taper bearing is, is tapered, the rollers don't run exactly um, straight. They actually, um, they slide across the surface mm -hmm. and they, uh, when the taper roller turns, they actually um, n need the grease in the bearing to actually make sure that the roller slides sideways as well as rotates around. So mm -hmm. these are a straight, um, a straight ball in a race. So there's no side load. Um, the retainer plate literally just holds the bearing in now. Um, we don't have to worry about clamping down the outer to the inner. Um, yep. The taper bearing has a cone that sits in the diff first and then the taper bearing sits in and relies on the seal casing to hold the outer bearing in. So we're no longer compressing it, um, compressing the taper. Yep. We, we're just running, um, yeah, even though these have got a tight seal at the moment, there'll be almost zero drag. Yep. Um, and load rating wise, this is, the factory is 63 mil diameter. Um, these are 80 mil overall. Mm -hmm. So it's a um, like 25% bigger bearing. It's yep. probably more if you work out the maths um, with vol uh, volume in the circle. But yeah, they're just um, they're just a really good bearing. This is the biggest bearing that we use. Um, there's one other bearing that is bigger than this, but we don't use it because it's not readily available for the like street performance parts that we do. Yep. But 
Um, there is one neck size up, but this one here will support, you know, say we've had cars over 1500 horsepower with this bearing forever and live forever. Yeah. Um, this same size bearing we use for our 35 and 40 spline axles. Mm -hmm. um, we spec the axle 30 spline billet with um, the larger bearing journal and everything. So um, strength wise, um, the axle material is a lot better than a factory Ford axle material. It's, this is actually a forging. So um, yeah, I'd, it's a very large performance upgrade. Yeah. So something that will out succeed the horsepower you ever put in this car. Yeah, so, in my car at least, yeah. It's not yeah. Gonna, yeah, I'm not gonna, yeah. nowhere near 1500 horsepower. Nah, no chance. nah, but, but even so, like um, over engineering stuff, we don't have to change stuff then, yes. you know, it, yeah. it, that, there's a good side to that. And because we use this so often and so do other people, because it mm -hmm. is a good product, um, the price comes down because the demand is there. We yep. use a lot of them and we keep them in stock as well, like keep a lot of the big baron stuff in stock. Um, it's it's actually dearer for me to buy a Timken taper bearing um, than what it is for me to buy the race bearing. Yeah. So yeah. like in some cases. Anyway. Yeah, but you're doing it anyway, um, so you may as well change it, so. Yeah. Finally got some four bangers. You know, I've done two four stud diffs in probably the last 15 years. Yeah. heavier every time. I guess I get older every day too. I give you a hand, but I've got a camera to hold now. <laughs> I should buy a camera. <laughs> So if I snap an axle, it can't come out, eh? Sorry? If I snap an axle, it can't come out? Um, if you snap it here, which you won't in your case, that's too thick for your horsepower application. But if you did snap it over here or at the, mm. it will not, know because um, it's still on the lock collar. If it yeah. snaps through where the bearing goes, possibility, but I've never seen that. I think they'll be going on the front where they're clear of everything. The good thing about these calipers, they've got a bleed nipple on the top and the bottom. Oh, sick. So, so they're actually you universal. Put yeah. You can put them anywhere you wanted to. Um, the caliper part number from left to right is the same, except if you get staggered pistons. Okay. You can get a smaller, larger piston combo. Mm -hmm. And then in that case, then yeah. So we'll tack them on there. Um, that's it, eh? You just yeah. got to tidy it up. I just got to do a couple little linishes. But yeah, I, I'm pretty confident that'll do you. Yeah. <laughs> well done, man. So right. fucking cool. Let's, uh... This has just solved so many problems for me yep. in, in one shot. Oh, it's so fucking cool, dude. Look at it. Right, killer. Plus once it's powder coated and, oh man. Yeah. It's a shame you know it's, you know it's a shame? Once it's powder coated, people are gonna look at it and go, oh, that's standard. Yeah. <laughs> he's, gonna say, he's gonna say, how's he running 700 yeah. horsepower through a standard diff? Yeah. <laughs> how's the standard diff not breaking? What did he do to it? If you don't look at the front of Matt's car, like from the pinion side, yeah. you probably wouldn't know it's got a nine inch in it. No. Yeah, so the car doesn't need much now that you've done this. This was part of like the biggest headache for me. Yeah. A car needs wiring and a new ECU, but... What's it got in it at the moment? Uh, fucking Microtech. Oh, yike. And yike. The, the wiring is like horrific. Oh, Microtech, mate. You don't have to say any more. Are the... Do the axles come out? Do you need a puller? No. No, oh, they um, They'll only need a puller if you get shit in there. So that's why we put a little tiny bit of like transmission fluid or light motor oil. Yep. Um, on the O-ring, because that way it can't corrode. So it's different to like the factory axle, how you'd have to press it in or like draw it in, or is that? Uh, yeah, okay, so you, 
Because You're I don't, talking about I don't the think... first time you've put an axle in the diff, you had to draw it in? Yeah, but I don't think my factory axle had the O-ring, it was the It bearing. was a cone, was and the bearing fucking... has a seal on yeah. the end of it. The okay. seal pops in and actually holds the bearing in. Okay. But it's a shit design because the seal chews the seal as it goes in. So sometimes you fuck it up, and then you've got to pull the whole thing apart to change the seal. And then to pull it apart, it's like you need a slide hammer. And that's to... frustrating. Yeah. Oh, that's easy. Yeah, man. When they're built right and they're square and straight, you get them out. Sick. So after trial fitting the diff into the car, I did come back at a later date to make some slight tweaks to the diff. And whilst I was there, Spicer did bend up some fresh brake lines for me. So at the time of editing this video, the diff is now complete and ready for powder coat. So once I get the diff back from powder coat, I'll do a video showing you guys the car and you'll get to see how the diff turned out and how it looks in the car. So if you like the video, let us know what you guys think in the comments. And while you're there, let's see if you guys can guess what my new car is and see if you can guess the details like the body style and the color. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you next time. Is this the brake line off your car? Uh, one of my cars. It's yep. not the same. Spare? Spare. A rolling shell. Yeah. I kind of accidentally bought three sprinters, you know? Oh, yeah, good problem, Nev. Yeah. Yo, I accidentally buy shit all the time. Yeah. I don't know how it fucking happens. It's just, next thing you know, there's fucking three of them. Sound like me explaining to my wife. <laughs> I'm unsure. I just, I was there and it happened and I'm sorry, but it <laughs> happened and I can't. <laughs>